This video is going to be a bit morose, but also uplifting, and possibly a bit melancholy. You may be angered at times, or possibly elated. If you haven't guessed yet, we're talking about writing emotions. Maybe you're surprised by that. Emotions are really the only reason we write fiction, when you get right down to it. Whether it's an intriguing mystery, or an awe-inspiring epic, or a depressing tragedy, all successful stories work to trigger some group of emotions within the reader. What emotion a piece evokes is largely up to the writer, and one of the grand skills of writing is successfully evoking a desired emotion within the reader. Now what we're focusing on today is character emotions, not reader emotions, although the two aren't mutually exclusive. Character emotions that don't seem to fit with a given situation, or that aren't clearly communicated to the reader, are going to put a distance between them and the characters. Scenes where the reader is supposed to be sad or happy or angered aren't going to come across that way if they can't connect with the characters on an emotional level. This means it's incredibly important that the emotions of your characters are clearly conveyed to the reader. So with that, here are some tips for writing character emotions. Tip number one. Embrace subtlety, without being too blatant about it. Emotions are kind of strange. They can overpower and completely change a person's behavior, while at the same time that person may not necessarily be aware of what they're feeling. I mean, think about the last time you flew into a blind rage. Did you really stop to consider the fact that you were being overcome by anger? They don't call it a blind rage for nothing. A lot of writing emotion involves writing about things that the character may not be aware of. So you may have a character that's angry or sad, but they don't necessarily know that or aren't directly expressing that they feel that way. In addition, a lot of emotions are expressed in very subtle ways. They may not necessarily come out in the dialogue or in the actions of the character or be directly expressed in the character's thoughts. I made a video a while ago about body language, and this is probably your best tool when it comes to describing subtle emotional cues. Using body language is probably the best tool. The video is, well, the video is still useful. You should, you should go watch it. But when it comes to these sort of subtle emotional cues, you're pretty much limited to body language or possibly the character's thoughts, which I have a video about as well. As we'll talk about later on, body language, and to a lesser degree character thoughts, have the added advantage of not requiring you to directly spell out the emotion that the character is feeling, instead allowing the reader to infer it from the body language or the character thoughts. And inferring things is a great segue to our next tip. Tip number two, have characters observe and be observed. When writing emotion, you can't forget about the other characters beyond the viewpoint character. You also need to convey the emotions of all the other characters in the scene. Humans are natural observers of emotion. We pick up on numerous signs, both subtle and blatant, from others around us about their emotional state. And your characters should do the same thing. They should notice the subtle changes in body language and other characters around them that accompany different emotions. They should notice things like tone changes when others speak, and they should just have a general sense of what the emotional state of the other characters is. In fact, this is a good way to get at some of the more subtle emotions that I talked about earlier. Having a character mention something about another character or think about some non-verbal cue that the character is giving them is a good way to get emotion across to the reader especially in situations where the character feeling that emotion might not be directly aware of it. And of course, how you get that emotion across to the reader is very important. Tip number three, watch for telling and repetition. Rarely do you ever want to directly state the emotion that the character is feeling. This is a textbook example of telling rather than showing. The reader doesn't want to be told that a character is angry or that a character is sad. They want to be shown that a character is angry or that a character is sad. It's much better to use other tools at your disposal. I've already talked about body language and character thoughts. 
Other ways that you can do this involve changing dialogue or the actions that the character is taking. Having a character speak in a very abrupt, terse way might indicate that they're angry. If they're stammering a little bit more, kind of tripping over their words, they might be nervous. Another approach here is to have a character act out of character when they're feeling a particularly strong emotion. This can help clue the reader into what they're feeling. For example, having a comic relief character not cracking jokes when they're feeling anxious or angry shows the reader that the emotion they are feeling is strong enough to change that character's behavior. This can have an even greater impact if we've never seen that character behave that way before in the story. Of course, you need to be careful with this. Anytime you attempt to show an emotion, there is always the chance that the reader will interpret the wrong emotion. A way to avoid this is to ensure that you're using every tool at your disposal, be it body language, thoughts, observations, etc., and make sure that you're passing a lot of information about that character's emotional state to the reader. And you want to make sure you do this without being repetitive. You want to avoid saying the same thing over and over again. And make that same joke every time I warn you about being repetitive. That's kind of repetitive. You will have common expressions that you're going to fall into over and over again. Your characters might always be frowning or bawling their fists or muttering the same curse word under their breath. You want to make sure that you identify these writing tics and be sure to mix it up. Adding variety will not only help to make the work more engaging, but it will also help push your limits as a writer. Also, a lot of the commonly used ways to describe emotions have become a bit cliched. I think about things like a character banging their fist on the table or having their stomach clench up in knots. Those are things that readers are probably tired of seeing. Just like you're probably tired of seeing my face because you've been watching it for this entire video and we're at the end of the video. So there you have it, a very brief and quick introduction to writing emotions. There was no way I was going to get everything about this topic into one video without it being a really, really long video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.